Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good following morning. Very, very special edition today. I am live from the island of Kos in Greece, from the Dodecanese Islands, uh, off the coast of Turkey, right near Bodrum. Uh, I am on vacation here with Kasha. Hello. Guest starring today. And today we are going to have a bit of a vacation themed episode because my special guest star in a few minutes is going to be Zach Davidson, who is a travel guru, a miles guru who flies all over the world for free and does very, very exciting, uh, very, very exciting stuff in terms of his travel and his expertise and is somebody with a lot of stories flying all over first class uh, the world, living the dream and he's like 24 or something. Uh, and he does it without spending any money, which is uh, exceptionally cool. Oh, hi, Barua. How are you? So let's see, to begin, uh, in terms of what's going on in Poland, hard for me to say because I'm not in Poland. Today is Thursday, August 6th. On Tuesday night, Kasia and I flew here to uh, Kos. There are direct flights from Katowice. So we went to the airport about an hour away from Krakow and got a direct flight. Uh, we sat sort of by ourselves, which was good, full protective gear and masks and shields and everything. Flight, flight wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad, only a two hour flight. And then took a taxi here to uh, Kos. I am sitting without the best view because I don't want you to, uh, the, if the, so the, the sun is the other direction, but I can maybe a little bit show, I don't know what you see, but can see Turkey right across across the way, which is uh, really cool. I think we're not going to go to Turkey this trip because uh, there's a lot of Corona there, and I'm, I think there might be also problems coming back to Greece from Turkey. So we're just going to uh, island hop a little bit. Uh, hi, Lori. Hi, Linda. And hi, Nancy. I know travel does sound like a dream. This is the first time. Uh, besides going just outside of Krakow for one day last week, this is the first time I've been outside of Krakow or outside of Poland since March 2nd. So it's pretty exciting for me to be able to, uh, well, the getting on the plane was a little nerve wracking, but not too, not too terrible. Everything seemed uh, pretty clean and here they're doing a good job in Greece, but it was exciting to, you know, my life is a lot of travel, probably too much travel, but it's uh, exciting to be able to travel again, especially on vacation. What, what's not to love? vacation. Hi, Evelina from Annapolis. How are you? Uh, we have two weeks all together. Uh, and we I booked three days in this hotel. We're in a really, really nice, uh, really beautiful hotel on cost. Booked this hotel for three nights. So tonight is our last night here. And then tomorrow we are going to get the ferry somewhere. We will see there's lots of islands all nearby. Uh, we're thinking of Kalimnos or Leros. We probably need to make a decision uh, soon where which island to do next and just probably Airbnb it there. So within an hour or two, you have uh, a ton of Greek islands and it's very quiet here. So you have tourists. Greece is doing well with Corona in terms of the numbers are low, but you, a lot of countries you can't visit. So you have tourists in Greece now from inside the European Union but you don't have from the United States and you don't have from a lot of the countries near here that usually make up a big part of their summer, uh, summer tourism business. So you don't have from Albania, from Romania, from Bulgaria, from Turkey. These are a big part of the of, uh, travel here in, um, in Greece. So on this island, Kos is a pretty, really pretty touristy uh, island or a lot of tourism. It's a very big island. We're on one side of the island. Got in Tuesday night, been here for a day and a half. We rented bicycles yesterday and have been uh, just riding around the island and uh, tomorrow we will get on a as i said get on a ferry and go somewhere and then uh, a couple different islands oh spetsies i will write that down hi bobby in philly bobby rothman spetsies i will look into that so we are in the courses right off the uh, turkish border um, in the Dodecanese island. So a little south of us is Rhodes and um, north will be Leros and Patmos, uh, Kalimnos. So those are the ones that we're sort of thinking about. Um, Patmos is where uh, John, the, the book of Revelations 
I guess, was written. So the apocalypse sort of island where John of Patmos wrote this whole, uh, whole thing, whole final book of the Bible. I hope you're biking. Gish says, in Ride for Living jerseys. Ah, I, should, I was just at the gym today in my orange Ride for Living uh, t-shirt. Zach has a deal on ferries. Good morning. Good morning, Jeffrey. We will talk to Zach very, very soon about, uh, about the ferries and about, uh, Zach. I don't think Zach takes ferries. Zach just uh, has private, private motorboats going from place to place. So it's kind of exciting to be here, ate some, you know, for me, food is always an issue since I don't really eat uh, too much as a vegetarian. Kasha has been eating a lot of seafood. And yesterday we hit up two ice cream places. So don't worry, Kasha is getting her, Kasha is getting her uh, fix of ice cream. We ate uh, some very good ice cream. Uh, what you have sometimes in Greece, which we didn't have yet, is ice cream from sheep cheese, uh, sorry, from sheep milk, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So right now, still, we've only had cow milk ice cream uh, and hopefully I'm gonna try some sheep milk ice cream. Just wanna show you guys the view again. This, I'm in, I'm, so I'm not in the room, I am downstairs. There's a really nice restaurant here and they're opening for dinner soon. So they said I can sit on sort of an outdoor patio next to the pool in the restaurant. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of the view. If you see something in the distance, a sort of hazy island, maybe you can see that's Turkey. So very, very close to the Turkish border. Greece and Turkey don't usually get along very well. Let's hope, hope that they get along while, at least while we're here. Um, just watching the news has been pretty crazy with the bomb in Lebanon. And uh, something that was very cool was I saw that the, you know, it was a tragic loss, but I saw that the Israeli government reached out to Lebanon. Of course, they're in a state of war for years and years, but the Israeli government did reach out to Lebanon uh, with an offer to help. I'm not sure if its offer has been, uh, has been taken up on yet, um, but I, do, I did also see that the, um, the city hall of Tel Aviv was lit up with a Lebanese flag, which I thought was uh, exceedingly, exceedingly cool. So we'll see, I guess there's a lot of complicated issues in terms of taking them up on their, on their uh, offer to help, but it's nice to see that Israel, uh, Israel is doing something like that, as they did they have been very helpful with Syrian refugees on the border and treating a lot of uh, Syrians in the hospital. But it's tragic to see that explosion. And these days, when everybody has cameras around, I don't know, you see all this footage of the explosion. I've never seen anything like that, especially as a non-war explosion. That's uh, pretty, pretty crazy to see. I'm not seeing any questions, so I think that I am going to get to Zach in a moment. So Zach is a very, very interesting character. First met Zach on, um, actually Rabbi Avi first met Zach. Sorry, just pulling that up. So Rabbi Avi first met Zach on a flight from going from Krakow. Uh, and just said, oh, this is, I met this guy. He's a cool guy. You should, uh, you, you should meet him. He's very into all this travel stuff. So Zach and I met and really hit it off. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a, a, a really fascinating character because especially when you're someone like me that travels, I guess for any of us, but when you really start, doing, when your life is so much travel, then you really appreciate the intricacies of lounges and upgrades and this flight versus that and this airport and how to maximize miles and all of these things. And Zach is doing that in a way that I've never seen anybody do it. So you have really, you have some people that can, uh, that, you know, have a credit card and they put everything on their Amex or whatever, and they get miles and they use those miles. That's a good, that's the regular way of doing it. And people should do that. Zach actually seems to do all of this without spending all the original money signing up for this card and canceling it. I'm not sure exactly all how many details he can go into, but it's pretty fascinating to see this 20, you know, at this point he was, you know, 21, 22 year old kid flying in these like first class Q suites on Qatar, flying to Melbourne and all these crazy flights and things that he's doing in Maldives and all this. So we're gonna talk to Zach a little bit about that. Let's admit him. Zach, we'll get to all the details. I don't have it exactly in front of me. I apologize. Zach is, I think, 20 can't be more than 25 or 26 you just recently graduated from tel aviv university with a degree in engineering he's working on the working for the project now which he'll tell us a little bit about and then we can talk 
to Zach about all his travel stuff. He's the founder and CEO of Z to A Travel, very well named company, I should say. I'm not sure how the company's doing, but at least it has an excellent name. Not sure we can hear from Zach maybe where he was inspired to come up with such a brilliant name, such such as that. But uh, it's my honor to welcome our youngest guest so far, Zach Davidson. How are you, Zach? Excellent. Tired, long day, hot as hell in Israel. Been running around the whole day. Finally back in the AC, showered before this. Are you in your new luxury your new luxury apartment, Zach, or not yet? Uh, not yet, sadly. September one. So Hopefully Zach, before, how, I hope in about two weeks. How old are you, Zach? 25 as of three weeks ago. 25. And you uh, just graduated. What did you, in engineering? So I've graduated about 18 months ago. Uh, finished five years of, of electrical engineering at TAU at Tel Aviv University. And then I did a year and a half of research in aerodynamics. So I was doing projects with uh, the U.S. Air Force, with uh, Airbus, fun stuff, uh, but I'd rather be sitting on the planes than designing them. <laughs> Fair enough. And now, and what, what are you working on now in Israel? So I, in a month, it'll be a year that I've been working with a Chinese company in, in Israel on the, uh, the first metro system they've ever built in Tel Aviv. So I have a dual career. I'm, an ele- I'm a full-time electrical engineer. I'm a full-time... CEO and travel, uh, doing all kinds of things. A lot of it is centered around point space travel, getting great deals on first business class. But right now we have about 16 projects we're working on. Wait, which, which 16 projects you're working on for which work? All, all related around travel. We have uh, visa processing for African countries, basically doubling the speed that you can get a visa in almost any country in Africa, like especially Somalia, Uganda, uh, these kinds of places where you're calling a guy right now who's probably in a hut that he made himself without a computer and, you know, doing everything written by hand. So my, my partner is a guy who has the Guinness World Record, the fastest person to travel to every country in the world. Uh, so he has all these contacts. So we're working every, on everything on the back end with the people there directly. Let me hear about your partner. How fast? There's a Guinness World Record. He they traveled the fastest to every country in the world? Every country in the world in 19 months. Wow. Wow. So Zach, so I, Zach, well, I don't know why I have you on the show. I should have this guy on the show. <laughs> no, I'll Zach. No. We're gonna talk, so we're gonna get into get into a little bit about uh, about all this cool stuff that you're doing. But I think for me, and you'll you won't take this in a bad way, Zach. But I think that what I love most, first of all, you're a good guy, and you know, and, and you love Krakow, and you've been on the ride, and, and you know, have a good connection. You've become part of our JCC family. But I always thought that you have this like somewhat slightly, you'll forgive me, nerdy guy, who's like sitting there with like champagne and caviar on all these flights and these perfect things. It was just the incongruous, you know, aspect of it that you really figured out, you, you really have figured out the system, Zach. I like to think so. I mean, even, even now in, in Tel Aviv, I mean, the, last night I was sitting on a, a friend's rooftop and, and there's a plane coming over and someone asked me, Zach, which, uh, which airline is that? So I, I can, you know, within a second, I, I know all the, the ways the, paint, the planes are painted know every plane within a second. I know every flight that's coming in out of Tel Aviv, especially now. Zach, you obviously love travel, and I'm going to talk to people who I think, uh, you know, it's a rare opportunity to actually hear some from somebody like you, because that, there aren't that many people doing really what you're doing, and you figured that you figured it out at age 20-something is really pretty cool. So tell me, first of all, how did your love for travel begin? Uh, I mean, I, I traveled a bit when I was a kid, uh, a few trips to Florida, a couple of trips to Europe. Um, the first trip I ever booked using points, uh, I booked at midnight, probably five years ago, Air France, Tel Aviv to Paris. I booked it three hours before the flight, packed a bag with a change of clothes for the next day, rent to the airport, and it was the most exciting thing I've ever done. And I don't, I don't know anyone in Paris. I didn't book a return trip, but that, that's what I did. I found a hostel for 10 euros for the night. And when I got there, I found a flight back from Brussels. Uh, met a girl in the hostel who later became my girlfriend for the next three years. Um, yeah, that, that was the start of it. And 
since then, I've probably done average of 30 trips a year from Tel Aviv. Max, maybe tell people a little bit about it, because essentially, I, I said it earlier, I don't know if you heard the introduction, that, that you know, there are people who have a credit card, they're smart enough to put everything on a credit card, they get miles, they maximize those miles, sometimes there's a deal, and they use that. But you're doing something, I mean, you have this whole business now and all that, but essentially, uh, your travel aspect, you're doing something a little bit different, which is you're not really spending any money and you're, get, you're accruing all of these points, which are then turning into these amazing, uber luxurious trips around the world, which are not really costing you anything. Can you, you want to talk a little bit about that? So it's not necessarily no costing no me nothing, the, but... No one, but from the airline, no one from the airlines listening, Zach, don't worry. <laughs> so it's not necessarily costing nothing, but everything that I spend is very carefully calculated. And I make sure if I'm spending a lot, then there is a big return. So really, the only time I'm spending is to keep up my Aegean airline status. Uh, for those of you who don't understand what that means, basically, for, for people who are based in Europe or in Israel, if you fly short haul flights on Star Alliance Airlines, on Lufthansa, on Swiss, on Lot, uh, even if you're paying 20 bucks for a cheap economy ticket, uh, they treat you like business class at the airport. So you still have the business class check-in the fast security lane, the lounge access, everything's the same. And since the seats on the planes are the same in, in economy and business, there are no special seats. Essentially, you're able to get business class treatment on every single flight. So that I, in most years costs me about a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars to keep up every year. And that for you know several flights that I'll take in economy, like to Poland, to Germany, that I'll get them treated as if I spent quadruple what I paid for a business class. So that's fantastic. And then everything else, you know, first class, business class tickets, I'm only spending the taxes. I'm flying back to New York in about a month. United business class, I paid $30. So maybe, so Zach, how you're doing this because you have, uh, explain how you're doing this. Because for us, this sounds like magic as if I'm gonna get on Instead of walking across the street, I'm going to fly across the street. But you're flying all over for free, essentially for paying the, just as you said, thirty dollars is not what it costs for a business class ticket from Israel to New York these days. That's I'm going to say that's a four thousand dollar ticket, something like that. <laughs> and you're paying thirty dollars. So give us a, a, what, what's up with that, Zach? On the most simple level, I mean the, the the most of the most of the points I have are coming from credit cards, coming from either good deals directly with airlines that are selling miles or from third parties that also sell miles that I can get good deals on. Uh, so when I started everything, I was making no money. I was a student. I would sign up for a new credit card every two weeks, three weeks before banks caught on that there were enough people taking advantage of the, their system. And now they are severely limited the bonuses that you can get, the cards that you can sign up for. But I remember probably four years ago, I, with Bank of America, you could sign up for the same credit card uh, as basically as many times as you want. And there was one that they give you a bonus just for signing up. I signed up, I think, 12 times in the same month. And then the next month, canceled all of them. <laughs> Stick it to the system, Zach. I love it. Stick it to the banks. So essentially, was... my, my recollection, these days, you know, you're actually working and you're this, but I remember when I first met you, you had a plenty of time on your hands and it was really just sitting there and doing such a deep dive to understand. I mean, first of all, you have to have the type of mind and you obviously have this sort of mind, mind that works that way. But it was a lot of just research on your part to figure out how to, how to find the sort of little holes in the system. So not doing anything illegal, just doing things that from their side, they didn't think that somebody would sit around and figure that out. Exactly. And, and the, the trick to all this is that most of the good deals I've gotten can't be booked online. And you can't I mean, with, with, with so many blogs now, if you really do some searching, you can find out how to do it online. Most of the good information I have, I got from calling airlines, giving them, okay, I want to take this flight, Tel Aviv to Amman, Amman to Doha, and then Doha to Bangkok, and then Bangkok to Melbourne, and then Melbourne to Auckland, and just playing around with basically how I can maximize everything that I'm getting. Like that you'll never find online. And that, and that way, you know, I'm on combined flights that would have been 20, 30 grand and I'm paying you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks to be in first class in all these flights. So talk about, maybe give us an example of one. Uh, actually, I want to talk to you about this. You did something very, very sweet, which is you took your grandmother to like the Maldives. Where was that? You Seychelles or some crazy 
you went on some elaborate trip with your grandma, which is very sweet. So talk about talk about that, that the trip that you took with your grandma and how you traveled and how you paid for that. So probably it was probably the, the greatest trip I've taken in my life all in one. So for the first half of the trip, I took my girlfriend to the Maldives. Uh, that's an incredible deal from Israel. Probably costs seven hundred dollars to buy the miles to to book business class from here to the Maldives. Uh, also have a nice deal at the Conrad in the Maldives, also buying points, paid about $200 a night for an overwater villa. So wait, and did, but Jack, did Zach, did you actually pay money for that? Or you figured out how to do that? $200. Uh, $200 instead of about, instead of about a thousand a night. All right. So I, uh, I can live with it. <laughs> we sometimes actually use money. So when I was in the Maldives, I, uh, I, I didn't know where I was going to go next. Uh, I had a meeting the next week in Singapore and I called my grandmother and I asked if she wanted to join me uh, and we'll, we'll go to Singapore for a few days and then we can go wherever she wants or wherever, whatever sounds good after that. Uh, I told her, she said she has to think about it. I told her you have five minutes. I have a flight on hold right now. <laughs> so uh, uh, also everything with points booked her first class Cathay Pacific uh new york hong kong singapore um i didn't tell her how she's getting back to the states i didn't tell her where we're going next but we're definitely going to singapore didn't book a hotel i told her we'll figure everything out as we go along um i know someone at the at the marina bay sands got us a really nice deal stay at the iconic you know, singapore hotel with uh with, with that infinity pool uh took her to bali for a week and then to beijing and then Flew her back from Beijing. We had a flight. The flight from Bali to Beijing is probably what, one of my favorite mileage redemptions. Also, forty-five thousand Delta points for business, and that's a seven and a half hour flight. We were the only two out of a forty-two seat business class cabin. So we asked them turn the temperature down, turn the lights out. They made custom meals for both of us, um, four crew, and just the two of us sitting there was pretty spectacular. And that in, in business class, the first time that's ever happened to me, it was amazing to have that with my grandmother. And, and since that trip, she, I don't think we've gone a day without her asking me, do you remember this? Do you remember this? Very sweet. Really, really incredible trip. Zach, how many grandchildren does she have? Oh, hard to say. Probably about 20 now. I have Are some you... uh, Satmer aunts and uncles. Ah, you got the you got the ortho, ultra orthodox aspect going on, Zach. And now after the trip, are you her favorite? Without a doubt. I should hope so. Taking grandma to Bali—that's something you know. Most I don't know. Most of us, you know, we buy like you know, candies or something for our grandparents or a sweater. You took your grandma to Bali. Good for you, Zach. Yeah, this is probably cheaper overall than buying a, a sweater. <laughs> well, for you. for you. So maybe talk also about like maybe is there. A, is there a deal that jumps out at you, like some place that you flew first class that, you know, and you can sort of talk us through the whole process, how you did that, 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 uh, you know, some, I remember, didn't you fly like on Qatar, like the Q suites? Like what was the? So probably the, the best experience that I've ever had for the fewest number of miles and also the easiest one to book. I don't know fewest uh, miles, but in other words, something that you actually so spent that, you, that cost you the least amount of money and the most crazy luxury oh, yeah. that you've done on oh, yeah, no, sure. no so, actual and, money. Yeah, and this is also one that, well, for people that are based in Israel who or who can fly out of Israel, makes a lot of sense and it's pretty easy to find it online. So you can book 45,000 United Airlines points, first class from Tel Aviv to India, Sri Lanka, the Maldives. Uh, so you fly Tel Aviv to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Delhi, to Mumbai, to Bangalore, wherever they fly there. So yeah, 45,000 points and about 60 bucks in tax for a flight that would normally be seven, $8,000. So after the connection in Frankfurt, they have a separate terminal for all first class passengers. So you don't even need to stand in line anywhere. They have their separate check-in, their separate security, passport control, the entire terminal is basically the, the lounge. You have- That's the Lufthansa, I'm sorry. Are you talking about the Frankfurt, the first class uh, Frankfurt- First class terminal in Frankfurt, yeah. Frankfurt for Lufthansa, yeah. So yeah, after 
yeah, amazing food, drinks, doing whatever you want in the lounge, taking a bath. Uh, they, you can select which car you want them to drive you into the plane. They have a fleet of probably 11 different Porsche models. And you just say, yeah, I want the, the 911, I want this one. And they drive you through the tarmac to your plane, take you up on an elevator, and then push you through the line. And fun fact about these flights is most of them are completely empty in first class. So last time I flew to India, uh, was two years ago, plane was completely empty. I had all of first class to myself. The pilots invited me to the cockpit when we were in the air. Um, really incredible, incredible experience. So when you're on and, the plane, Zach, when you're on the plane and you're this kind of like, just, I don't know, say, you know, you're like kind of regular looking guy dressed in your like, you know, t-shirt or whatever. Who do they, who do they think you are? I don't mean when you're booking it. I mean, are you on the plane? Do, are they like, oh, here's some like super wealthy kid or they're like just your, do they, do they, do they you're some like tech, maybe you're some like, I guess you're a 25, you could be some like super tech entrepreneur. Like, do they have any clue about what's going on that you're somebody who's kind of with all the miles doing some like cheeky stuff or generally they don't? Usually first assumption is, that I'm using my dad's points. Like there, there are a lot of like younger people flying in business first class. A lot of them are using their parents' points. A lot of them have like parents who have just millions and millions of miles lying around. So right. uh, let them use them. Um, I've never really been asked, honestly. Um, only in like in, in these types of first class uh, flights that I've taken where there's only one person in the cabin or no one else. Then we'll get into like a long discussion about what I do, how I manage to fly like this. Other than that, never really got asked. Now I gotta ask you a question because uh, Kasha, my wife, uh, who was on before, who you know, uh, is, first of all, she loves to travel. Uh, so if, I, if Kasha leaves me one day, it might be for you since I travel a little bit with her, but I, I don't think I, could, I couldn't keep up with your travels, Zach. If you, if you take your grandma to Bali, then the rest of us are all in trouble. But anyway, Kasha, despite, besides loving travel and all that, Kasha loves lounges. She's obsessed with the lounge. So, and I know you're a big fan. I've seen on your, on your, uh, Facebook, uh, your, your Facebook page, uh, Mad for Miles, that you posted you know, a whole huge breakdown about the different lounges that you've been to. You are talking to me the other day about the Swiss, uh, Swiss first class lounge in Zurich. Tell me about what's what's the best lounge in the world, according to you. Best lounge. I mean, basically, with with first class, really the only difference above business is mm -hmm. most of them will have a sit down restaurant, and more than just you know a couple of buffet but buffet items like uh, you know some chicken or some pasta. Like you'll really have like sophisticated dishes. You'll have a huge wine list, huge. Uh, so a la carte, a la carte dining. Things. Oh yeah. Um, some of them even have hotel rooms, have a spa, have free massages. Um, honestly, the, the, the one that I sent you last night, the Swiss first class, probably the best. I mean, the, if you've, they, they probably have five or six reviews online from different bloggers. It's, it's really not an easy one to get into because you can't book Swiss first class with, uh, with points. So you, you either need to know like one of the like 1000 super ultra elite Swiss or Swiss Lufthansa members to get you in as a guest, or you need to book, I, the, the way I did it, I booked from India to Frankfurt to Zurich to Tel Aviv. And only because the India to Frankfurt flight was in first class, they let me in. Um, but yeah, the, the food was just phenomenal. The service was incredible. They have uh, a deck outside with uh, amazing views of the countryside. I think the business, the Swiss, the business lounge in Zurich is also, which I've been in, um, uh, is also uh, pretty good. I mean, it's not what you're talking about, but I, I was impressed in my, my more uh, simple expectations and simple lifestyle than yours, Zach. Uh, they have pizza and uh, pizza and ice cream, which is kind of, for me and Kasha, that's sort of what, what, what we're looking for in a lounge or, or really in anywhere. So that's and, uh, it. But then in terms of service, I mean, really in, in Asia, a lot of, in Asia, India, a lot of the airports just give you beyond what you could imagine. In, uh, if you're flying out of Mumbai in Air India first class, 
uh, they had three people escort me through the airport. One guy is holding uh, my, my carry-on suitcase. The other guy is holding my boarding pass and talking to some people on the phone. And another guy is standing behind me basically as like my escort, make sure no one's bothering me. That time I was coming from like a monsoon in Mumbai. I'm wearing like a really wet t-shirt and shorts. Uh, I looked terrible. <laughs> And I have three escorts to the airport. They're like pushing people out of the way, skip, uh, letting me cut through the lines. Were people taking the photos. I... Were people taking photos of you? Probably. They they, they must have thought I was some uh, superstar. You like they, a, this is really the build... kind of escort that I was getting. Maybe you can. You know, I think you should tell people you're Bill Gates' son. You well, then, have... then I'm piggybacking on someone else's fame. I need to. I need to make my own. That's true, but if you, so, you have to sort of make up a, fa a fake famous person to be to be related to be like so so basically, but by the time we got through security, uh, it was a it was a remote gate. They already started boarding, um, and I asked them if I can go to the lounge because I still like taking pictures so I can write a review something, uh, and they said no, sorry, we have to get to the gate. We're already uh, boarding. Guy made a call and he's like, okay, you know what, we we can go to the lounge. It's fine, and okay, so I took. Two minutes of pictures. I told him I'm ready to go. No, no, no. Sit, sit, sit. You're okay. Uh, I see on the on the board the my, my flight is final call. It's like no, sit. It's okay. Have a drink. Do whatever you want. And we get to the gate, and they held the business class and first class bus that entire time. So the all the business class passengers were sitting waiting on a bus for me to just relax in the lounge. They even kicked a girl out of a seat at the front of the bus and forced me to sit there. <laughs> They must have loved you. So we have a question coming in, uh, Zach. Ryan, our JDC fellow, who have you met? I oh, know you haven't met him. We, we, we spoke over the weekend, actually. Uh, okay, so Ryan is asking Polaris or Delta One? Embarrassingly, I've never flown either. So uh -huh. I'm, flying, I'm flying United Polaris in a month. Um, normally, I fly the, the European Airlines from... Uh, here to Tel Aviv. And the, the thing is, I'm mostly flying from Tel Aviv to Asia or Tel Aviv to Europe. So when I when I go to the States, it's almost impossible to get the mileage tickets on the direct flights. Yeah. So tell me, Zach, because I, 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 I kind of feel like, and this is a broad generalization, but if I had to look at the world in terms of airlines, I would say the Asian airlines are the best, and then Europe, and then America is really at the bottom. You're forgetting about the Arab airlines. Okay, the Arab airlines in their own category. Oh. Probably the Arab airlines, then the Asian airlines, then, Amer then European and then American airlines on the bottom. Is that true? Honestly, so from, I mean, I, I get a ton of client feedback because I'm booking tons of United, Delta, American flights all the time. People are very happy with United in general. Delta, a bit less so American. No one's really so enthusiastic about. Um, I would say there, there are a lot of European airlines now that match what you can get in Europe. British Airways, new business class is phenomenal, better than most Asian airlines, actually. Um, they're trying to compete because they're losing a lot of customers to the Asian airlines, huh? Absolutely. I, the, the thing with British Airways is people don't really care to because their old business class has eight seats across, where Asian airlines usually have four seats across. So, so it's a lot less space. And British Airways is also charging a lot more because they have direct flights from London. People are paying it. Um, How do you see it? Not that you can predict, but you're probably you're you're watching the sector more than the rest of us. Um, how do you see how do you see the 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 travel sector coming out of Corona? In other words, maybe things will be permanently changed. But do you see consolidation in the industry? Do you see airlines going under? Do you see hotels when once the world opens up giving good deals, or people will be so desperate to fly that they won't get you know that? They, how do you see the immediate follow of period right after Corona uh, sort of subsides, assuming it does? You know, knock on wood. Do, you, do you, how do you, how do you see the travel industry coming back after this? Because it's been devastating for travel. Absolutely. Most of the, the reports that I'm reading think that the cost of travel is going to go way up. So I, I'm really not sure what that means for airlines like Ryanair, like Wiz, like uh, EasyJet. Um, I would definitely expect business class fares to go way up. Um, and the, the thing is, recovery is going to happen so slowly. So I don't think there's going to be any kind of immediate shift. And especially since right now we're seeing the lowest fares I've seen in my lifetime. 
Uh, I don't think that's that's going to change anytime soon. Yeah. Um, but it's really tough to say because we, we don't know how much longer this is going to go on for. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the flagship airlines of most countries are going to stay operating. They basically have to. Right. I saw, um, you know, I just did not, you know, uh, these days you can find such cheap flights around Europe. And I know uh, we, you, you've talked, we've talked about this privately a lot, but you know, and you're doing it and I'm doing it. It's a kind of a separate issue. Just you buy these tickets, $20, $40, whatever. But these tickets to Greece cost me round trip, direct flight from, from Poland to Kos was, was $50 each for us on, yeah. uh, on Lot. So not on Wizz Air Orion, on like a, on a regular European carrier. And they let me change the ticket for free as well, which they shouldn't have let me, but yeah, it's incredible. Not a fundable ticket. So a hundred dollars for the two of us. Incredible. Yeah, the, the flight that I met Rabbi Avion, I think I paid 30 zloty to go uh, Katowice, Tel Aviv. So, Zach, I have another question for you, which is more about you. So you're, you're, you're getting all these deals on everything. Now, how does that affect like the rest of your life? If you have to go buy a pair of sneakers, you want to go buy a pair of Nikes and they cost $120. Are you like, oh, my God, I can't spend like, is it do you spend? Are you like normal when buying other stuff? Or is everything like, oh, my God, I'm flying around the world for free. So it affects how you just deal with money in every other way. It definitely affects the way I deal with money in every other way. Uh, the only other thing I really spend money on are, are, are my phone and my computer. I always have to have newest computer, newest phone, but uh, also also relates to business. Everything else, I, since I'm used to getting such high value for such little money, you know, buying a... $90 polo shirt from J. Crew. buying a, I have to furnish the new apartment, buying furniture for this place is just driving me crazy. I was, I was thinking, you know, you're so used to getting this, you know, so much value that you're getting in all of, in this huge part of your life. So uh, difficult to, yeah, to pay, you know, you're not a pay retail kind of guy. But Zach, tell me about your business, your new business. So, it's a, it's a travel concierge service. What that means, so we're, we're built on the basis of a travel agency. You know, can do this the name. Zach, start with the name, sorry. Excuse me so for the original name that I incorporated under is Mad for Miles. That's a blog that I started several years ago, or around the time that I met Jonathan several years back. Um, when I was at the ride for the living last year, Jonathan and I were talking on Shabbat and he suggested changing the name to Z to A Travel. So really completely Jonathan's idea. I thought about it for a while, waiting at Krakow airport on the flight back, I bought Z to A Travel.com, um, made a new logo and that's the new name of the corporation. Um, Your name is Zach, the Z to A is a good name. Zach Z to A refers to basically kind of all encompassing travel business. So my biggest clients are people who are traveling, you know, long haul eight, 10 times per month, traveling to African countries where they need visa processed, you know, next day need bodyguards in Iraq, which we've done before. Um, really just crazy. Like I, I have several who are trying to also travel to every country in the world. Uh, so setting up trips for them to go to, you know, 20 African countries in a month, uh, working out logistics, working out safety. Um, so it's a combination of these kind of specialized services. For the most part, very good deals with uh, airfare, um, okay, private well, relationships. If somebody, sorry, Zach, if somebody, uh, I understand that I don't think that that many people listening are trying to go to 20 African countries or anything, but if people are, you know, just people, so you've, you've helped us out. I know people that have wanted to fly just business class tickets somewhere and you've been able to, to get a good deal. So if people just want generally a good deal on a, on a ticket, then they can contact you and it's possible that you can get them a better deal than they would get themselves. Of course, yeah, we booked um, last week, uh, Budapest, New York business class for $1,100, where online it was gonna be about five, six grand. Um, so deals like that, uh, <laughs> only a little bit cheaper. Yeah, no, absolutely. I haven't met anybody who uh, who knows the travel industry the way that you do and has it attacks it with such fervor and uh, yeah, and fascin and with fascination. 
And do you think, Zach, and, and just uh, and moving forward, and not that you need to decide everything by 25, by the way, um, but do you see yourself moving forward on sort of this twin track? Like you want to stay doing your engineering and running a travel company, or you just sort of see yourself probably one of them kind of becoming, you know, one, one you would focus on. How, how does that, how's that going to work out? Or you don't know? For me, it's a matter of security is, is knowing that travel fails. I have this, if engineering fails, I have my business. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident in both succeeding, uh, especially at this age when I'm not married, when I have the time to just, you know, work until past midnight every day. I'm happy with it. Also, I, I have plans to move to China after this. So working with a Chinese company being the only uh, Chinese, Hebrew and English speaker within the engineers in this company gives me just a very comfortable position there. Oh, you speak Chinese? My Chinese is better than my Hebrew. Good for you, Zach. Zach, is it is it true that uh, a certain a certain couple that that you know very well is is waiting for their honeymoon, and uh, you are gonna take send them on their honeymoon? Is that true, Zach? I thought this was gonna happen a couple of years ago. <laughs> Zach, I oh, hope you have miles. I'm sorry, Zach. I hope it's, some of us take a long. Well, some of us work very hard, even if we are married. It takes us a long time to go on our honeymoon, and then Corona happens. But if Corona, if things are better by February, Zach, then uh, February it's gonna be. February is a good time. Save some miles, Zach, for, for, for our honeymoon, please. We have so many millions in stock right now. I think um, I think we can manage. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And yeah, I need not only, Zach, the miles, but I need your advice where to go. Tons of places. February, Bali, if, assuming Bali is open. Southeast or, Asia. Or, or, or uh, South Africa. Southeast, or Asia, for, Southeast Asia, I think, for sure for us. Just a question of where and, uh, you know which place is good at, you know, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by the Maldives. There's such a sun, but I feel like, I feel like I would be bored there like in the evening because all we want to do is lay in the sun all day, but what do you do in the evening? There's no like stuff to, you know, ride around in a scooter and stuff. There's nothing. It's just Gilligan. Evening, I mean, you basically just need to hope that you'll make some friends on the Island. You invite them to your room. You kind of just like hang out with people unless, unless you want to spend crazy money on. Zach, I'm 50 years old and I'm married. I don't want to make any friends. <laughs> But yeah, at night, there really is not that much to do. Um, the cool thing, I, I don't know if this is everywhere in the Maldives, if it was just this island specifically, if you turn on the lights uh, from your back porch, sharks will come swimming around uh, around your balcony. So, so we would just sit on the balcony and watch stingrays, watch sharks all swimming in circles around. It's pretty cool. Zach, we have people who are watching on Facebook who are already asking for your uh, name, uh, for uh, sorry, for contact information for you. Can I put that? What should we put? What should we put in there, Zach? Yeah, for uh, email. WhatsApp. Yeah, we can do WhatsApp. Put your WhatsApp. Yeah, honestly, it's fine. Wait, just give that to me. I'm gonna put it in right now. Plus. Uh, so plus nine seven two. Yeah. Five eight. Yeah. Four two six. Yeah. Seven four zero nine. Seven four zero nine. Zach David. What's up? Yeah, we're the we're getting flooded. Flooded with uh, with requests, Zach. You know, you know. Listen, uh, I thought that being in Greece, what better person to talk to you about travel? Uh, I you miss. Know, you. So here it's very nice. Is there's a I was saying before, there's a lot of there's a, a lot of business, there's a lot of travel going on, but uh, there are Greece, no Americans, no Turks, no Armenians, no Bulgarians, no Romanians. So it's a big chunk of their business is uh, is lost. So I think it's about uh, it's about twenty five percent. It's about twenty five percent full here, but it feels, but which is still oh, a lot wow. of people, just because they usually get, you know, what I mean, like down we, we we rode bicycles through the coast town, the main town here. And it was uh, it was really pretty busy, and, they, and then they're like, "Oh no, this is nothing. This is pretty empty." So, I wonder how tough it would be since I'm so Americans are allowed to go to Turkey. So if I'm just across the the water from you, I can just uh, rent a boat. I wonder who will stop me. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, they, I, I'm sure the Greek army has tons of uh, yeah. navy all yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, the Greek, especially because Greece and Turkey generally don't get along very well. So yeah. So we were thinking of going because we're right across from Bodrum. We're right across from the, you know, the city, yeah. that, the Turkish city. But then I figured that if Turks can't come here, 
then if we go there, then it could be a problem coming back. And plus, I don't know what's going to happen inside the EU. Could be like, oh, if you've been to Turkey, then you know, I don't want uh, quarantine or anything like that. Zach, yeah. as we, Zach, as we, let me see, just see if I have any other uh, questions that I had written down for you. Hi, to travel lounges. Zach, are you are you? Uh, what, 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 t talk about Krakow because you're a big fan of Krakow. So Why do you like Krakow I'll, so much. All these places you've been, you love Krakow. I'll try to make the story short because it, it's a long story. First Make time that I came to Poland is when I was 17 on a NCSY trip uh, where we spent a week in Poland, then worked at a summer camp in Germany for three weeks and then came to Israel. Um, getting off the plane in Warsaw is my first time in Poland. Um, they told us hide your Jewish identity at all costs. We can't let anyone know that we're Jewish. They'll literally beat you to death in the streets. And we're walking around with these two massive Polish bodyguards. I'm walking around kind of shaking um, and, and it wasn't my first time in Europe. I'd been to Germany before. I'd been to most Western European countries by then. Uh, Krakow, we stayed in the, in the Jewish quarter. We, we didn't bother going to, to the Rynek, didn't bother going anywhere else in Krakow. Uh, we walked by the JCC. Uh, they, they didn't tell us anything. They didn't tell us there were Jews living in Krakow. I thought it was um, kind of a visitor center. I didn't realize that there was really anyone living there. So then the trip that I took when I met Rabbi Avi, I had, a few, I had a few friends that wanted to go to Auschwitz. We found these crazy cheap flights. We went, we were there on Easter Sunday. So the only day the JCC was closed because I actually took them to the JCC. I, I told them I, I really want to go inside this place, see what they have, closed. And then happened to meet Rabbi Avi, Rabbi Avi on the flight back. And I told him I'm incredibly interested in uh, knowing what, uh, what you guys are working on. My, my whole family came from Poland. Um, and then within three, four weeks, we already had an internship set up for that summer. And in addition to this, you know, first trip to Poland being so terrifying for me and, you know, kind of confirmed my bias against Polish people that they're all out to get me and would really just harm any Jew they see in the street. And it's the same thing I've been getting from my family, from my grandparents, uh, to then come experience Poland. And not only Krakow really traveled so many cities across Poland with just the most incredible stories and experiences firsthand, uh, meeting you, meeting everyone there, healing, hearing all of your stories. Um, and then since then, I took my dad back for the first time since 1989 last year. Took basically every girl that I've dated That's recently, I took, I took them to Krakow. You did, did the ride to the living with your dad? Last year. And we were, he, he was planning on bringing the whole family back this year if uh, things went another way. Uh, but yeah, it's really become just about the most special place for me in the world. Having, you know, the sense of Jewish ident identity in Krakow as opposed to Israel. Uh, for me, it's really a lot more powerful. The, like the origins of really Ashkenazi culture really come from there, not from, not from Israel. Um, so yeah, really just in every way fell in love with Krakow. Could be my next uh, move after I leave Israel. We'd love to have you, Zach. We can do great things together, I'll tell you. Uh, it's a good, cheap, as you know, very, if you're gonna, considering you can work anywhere really, with the travel business, you have good flights, two good air, two airports near you, as you know, and also a very cheap uh, cost of living compared to Israel. That a, you know, that apartment, your, your luxury apartment that you're moving into in a few weeks is going to cost you a lot less in Krakow. <laughs> I we'd hope love, so. We'd love to have you, Zach. As we start to, uh, as we start to uh, get uh, toward the end, I have a few questions that I have to ask you. First of all, are you Team Latko or Team Hamantash? Hamantashen, honestly. Ooh. I never had a latka until two years ago. Interesting. Team Hamantash. That's two in a row for Hamantash. Catching up. L latka's been I, I, even, uh, I even baked Hamantash with my Chinese girlfriend last year. She baked fantastic ones. So What, what did you put in? What filling? Chocolate. All chocolate. Chocolate. Uh, very conservative. <laughs> Zach, uh, and I need to know your three favorite films, Zach. Uh, I, have really a guess about, I have a guess about one. Uh, first one is Joker. Saw it on a plane yeah. and then watched it again yeah. uh, two weeks ago. Loved it. I saw 
the founder uh, last week. That's the one about uh, the founding of McDonald's. Honestly, I thought that was fantastic. So wait, those are your favorite films of all time you happen to see recently? That happens. I'm really not a, not a film guy. I, mm-hmm. uh, the, the only movies I watch are just on planes when I'm hardly focusing. Well, that's a lot of time on the plane. What it's else? a lot of time on the plane. But I, I can't remember a single movie that I really watched. Ah, okay, uh, maybe Bohemian Rhapsody, which I recently found out was almost a completely fake story. Uh, <laughs> I was I was hoping you were gonna say Catch Me If You Can because there's a bit of a Zach element to that. Uh, film. I do love Catch Me If You Can. That's a that's a I, Zach. I'm, I'm I'm just thinking more about about recent movies that I've seen. Uh, but the, Bohemian the, Rhapsody, the, I watched on like three consecutive flights because I, I just like listening to the music, honestly. Fair enough. Zach Davidson, thank you very, very much for your time. And uh, yeah, I can't, I can't tell you, every time I go on a plane, uh, or almost all the time, I'm in a lounge or a plane or something, I always think, I, something always reminds me, and I always think, oh, I got to tell Zach about this, or Zach would appreciate that. So you've had a big influence on the way that I travel, the whole Aegean thing. You know, I'm uh, goal also uh, doing the Aegean, uh, keeping my miles up. So thank, you, thank you for all your help and, uh, and your kind words about Krakow, and it's great having you part of the JCC family. And uh, thank you also for sticking it to the banks a little bit. They deserve it. Of course. <laughs> Be well, Zach. Take care of yourself. It was my pleasure, Jonathan. All right, Enjoy your vacation. You. Thank you, everybody. Be well. Bye. Stay safe.